Hello, and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blog cast. This is episode 396. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis. Thank you for listening to the blog cast. And guess what? You, you don't know this if you only listen to the podcast, but this podcast was in the top 10 of uh, the indie arts podcast charts on Good Pods. We went to number nine last week. Pretty crazy, especially since the day before, literally the day before, I put out one of my rejection blogs, which I have lately only been doing like once a year, and I probably won't, you know, put it here on the podcast because I usually don't. Um, anyway, but at the end of it, I mentioned the like ways that the other two podcasts were charting. So the Dragoning and the Defense both made the top 100. Um, and I mentioned that this podcast had recently been at number 21 on the Indie Arts charts and had gone as far as 13 on the Indie Arts charts. Uh, but I was like, eh, I'm not going to celebrate until I make it to the top 10. Literally the next day, number nine, number nine, ladies and gentlemen, number nine. So thank you to those of you who made that happen. I'm not 100% sure that it's not just me liking my own podcasts over there because it says there's one listener and that listener is, is me. Uh, and I'm not even listening over there. I'm just clicking, you know, five stars and maybe maybe that's working. I, I don't know. But in any case... I mean, you know, you got to have something to celebrate. And number nine, um, it's now gone back up to like 22 or something. But hey, these things don't last. Sometimes they don't even last between the time that they send me an email about it and when I check it. So like I'll get an email that's like, the defense is number 57 on the... Uh, audio drama charts or whatever and then I click to go see it and it's like now it's number 68 <laughs> so like it doesn't last even an afternoon most of the time but still I thank you uh, listeners for getting me into the top 10 however briefly it may have been and I will go back there perhaps possibly maybe I don't know anyway Woo! So today, what do I have for you? I have this blog about uh, promotional tips, like all the ways you're supposed to, you know, get your podcast off the ground, get your album off the ground, get your whatever film, your, I don't know, whatever you got. Um, and this is based on, inspired by, um, an email or I guess a link anyway, whatever. It's a, it's like a, a newsletter from Spotify that told me, you know, how to get more people to listen to my podcast. Um, I'll tell you more about it in the post. It is called promotional tips for everything. Since I have several podcasts that are now hosted by Spotify, I receive their newsletter, four copies, one for each podcast, which offers podcasting tips. I mostly ignore them as I have read many tips previously and there's rarely anything new. I clicked on the most recent one though, since it was about how to grow your audience. I'm in the middle of putting out a new podcast, so I figured I could use some reminders of that kind of information. Ultimately, there was nothing in it I hadn't seen before, but something about it made me think about what they were suggesting in a new way. So many tips involved making some other form of media alongside the podcast. It felt like they were saying that in order to have success as a podcaster, you had to make videos. To bring ears to your podcast, you should also write a newsletter. It struck me as absolutely absurd. In order to create one thing, you have to become expert at several others. 
Let me tell you, I didn't get into audio to make video. If I wanted to make videos, I'd make videos. And I have made a couple. And as annoyed as this advice made me, I acknowledge that it's probably correct. I'm already doing it, honestly. For my latest audio drama, our producer has made multiple videos, some of which have done better than almost anything else we've put out in the world. I think they might help us bring people to the podcast. But I find the whole notion of having to do it infuriating. In order to create one thing, we have to now become masters of several other things to even be seen or heard. We have to become advertisers, video makers, newsletter writers, copywriters, audio experts, etc. This is why podcasts that come from public radio stations do so much better than the rest of us. They have a staff for all those other aspects. It didn't used to be like this back in the early days of our theater. If we put on a show, we put on a show. That's pretty much it. We made postcards and posters, sure, but that's about the extent of it. We did the art we were there to do. I find it ridiculous that the way to grow your audience in one medium is to increase your presence in another. It feels like I wanted to get better at driving a car. And instead of driving cars, someone advises me to start driving boats. It just very much feels like very different things. You might say, well, it's all media. But really, driving a boat and driving a car are both driving, but they are also very different. It also feels like this advice to grow a podcast by doing all these other things is essentially asking every podcaster to become a whole media studio. Make videos, make ads, make calculated social media posts, interview famous people. And I see how these things help. I really do. But people do all those things for jobs these days. And I don't love my chances in competing for social media eyeballs when everyone else has training and a salary. In that podcast I wrote about last time, Ezra Klein said that the middle is competing with the huge. That is, in the fight for attention, even things like the New York Times are the middle now. And Facebook and Google are at the overwhelming top. The little guys, down at the bottom of the attention economy, don't stand much of a chance when even the big guys aren't the big guns anymore. The thing is, It's clear from everything I've read that no one knows how to grow an audience, especially for podcasts. It's a crapshoot, like anything. I was just reading an article about the girl group started by mega tween pop sensation Jojo Siwa. You'd think the people who got Siwa's career started, her mom, really, would know how to make a girl group a hit. But as the article said... The world did not pick this group. They've pulled every lever. It's been almost two years. They're not going to make it. These people were making videos and social media content out the wazoo and doing it mostly unpaid. And the world has mostly shrugged. Maybe instead of doing all that promotion, they could have made some more music, developed the songs a bit more, and maybe not behaved abominably to the girls, which is what the article was actually about. I don't know, but I do know that that story highlights an arts and media landscape where everyone has to do everything, where there's always another job to do, even for people who have already experienced some success. But also... I'm not 100% convinced that a success in an adjacent media actually translates to success in the thing you're trying to promote. We got 830 views on a TikTok video. But that didn't lead to any uptick in listens to the podcast or ticket sales to the live recordings. It was basically meaningless. 
830 views is just 830 views on the platform it's on. Likes on your promo material don't necessarily lead to eyes or ears on the thing you're promoting. I think of novelists who are now required to be on social media promoting their work. They can't just write novels. They also have to create media followings, and probably their publishers are telling them they should make videos, too. I doubt that most novelists are videographers at heart. Everyone's a videographer these days. And sure, I'll do it. I'll make videos if I have to because I don't make things for no one to see them. And it somehow seems like the thing to do now. At least that's what everyone says. But the business around it all feels pretty dark and terrible. So a fellow artist, friend of mine, um, was comforted by this piece. Uh, I think she was feeling exhausted by all of the things that she was expected to do just to, you know, get a thing she made out into the world. And frankly, comforting my fellow artists is like mostly what I'm doing here. So I was very grateful to hear that and glad that there's some comfort to be had in this arena. Um, I don't know if there's a solution for it, really. Like, this is the world we live in. We're all just hustling in multiple ways at multiple times. But, like, every so often we can just at least, you know, point to the absurdity of the situation. And I feel like some things, you know, stretch you in an interesting way, in in a, like, oh, that's a fun thing to learn that I didn't know how to do before, um, for example, we, we, we were working on a trailer for the defense. Um, we, you know, I don't know how to make an audio trailer, but we're figuring it out and like, that's a cool thing. And it is also the thing that we're making, right? Like it's a different format and thinking about it is a new, interesting stretch, but it is still a podcast, <laughs> <laughs> for a podcast. So, yeah, but like I really do resent being, you know, instructed to make videos. And here's the thing, like I'm I my our producer for the, for the defense is really gifted at making videos and she made some really like popping social media social media type videos, like and she did it in like a night or a day, or I don't know, a few hours. Like, we did the show, the next day, she'd have something. And I, ha- I, if I had tried to make those videos, it would have taken me months. <laughs> Just months. So, like, it, it, there, there are expertises. <laughs> expertise? What, do you, what is the plural of <laughs> expertise? Anyway, there, there are many things that many people are good at, And not everybody is good at all of them. And uh, anyway, that's what makes me mad about all the situation. So what song do I have for you? Well, I looked at a bunch of selling songs. I've already, you know, uh, done a few. Um, And then I stumbled across this one from Memphis Minnie, who sounds like an amazing woman. Um, And it was recorded, this song, in 1935. It is called Selling My Pork Chops. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I also invite you to listen, go listen to Memphis Minnie because she's a delight. Um, and this song is about selling one thing and giving the rest of it away. Oh, not the rest of it. It's, in this case, she's selling her pork chops, but she's giving the gravy away. And I feel like that's, that's a little bit about what this is about, right? Like, it's like you have to m- make the one thing that you're trying to promote, that you're trying to put forward, and then you have to give away all this other stuff. So um, that is what this song is about for me. Uh, it is clearly not about that generally. <laughs> um, but... I shall play it for you in just a moment. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. 
If you like this podcast, please tell someone about it. Or, you know, click on five stars over on Goodreads, get us back into the top 10. Or wherever you have some stars you can click, click those stars. I, I, I am told that they make a difference. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but it seems like it might make a difference. I suspect that the ratings on Good Pods are maybe connected to the ratings on Apple because the reviews on Apple show up on Good Pods. So anyway, I don't know how any of it works, but if you see a star that you could click on to give us all of them, do it. <laughs> and thank you. You can like, review, subscribe. All of those things are incredibly helpful. Uh, if you'd like to support this podcast, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Uh, there is patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. Um, there's also Kofi. There's PayPal. All those links are in the show notes. You could also uh, sign up to be a paid subscriber on Substack. Uh, and if you have other ideas about where you like to support people, please let me know. I'm happy to sign up for whatever if it means some support. <laughs> so just, you know, uh, if you have a favorite and then that I'm not telling you about, just let me know. And mostly, thank you so much for listening. I mean, truly, it, it does make a difference. Like, uh, the more numbers there are, the more likely it is to be promoted and whatever, uh, you know, you know, you know, this is all ridiculous. But it anyway, it, it matters on a numbers level and it also matters on a personal level. So thank you. Um, so here I shall give you uh, selling my pork chops. But you sure can't stay long I got two men I had to be waiting on I'm selling my pork chops But I'm giving my gravy away Don't mean maybe I'm giving my gravy away I'm selling my pork chops But I'm giving my two, three days. Some of this stuff I sure gotta give away. I'm selling my pork chops, but I'm giving my gravy away. Don't mean maybe I'm giving my gravy away. I'm selling my This morning I see a man at my back door He'd been there all night Trying to get some more I'm selling my pork chops But I'm giving my gravy away Don't mean maybe I'm Giving my gravy away I'm selling my pork chops Don't be mad.